Hi, this is Leslie Hoban Blake, Vice President of the Drama Desk and co host of Two on the Isle. And I'm talking with my old friend David Lefkowitz on Days Gone By on UNC Radio. Here on the 11th Annual Total Theater Tony Special, Dave Leftwoods here with you and talking to one of my old friends in theater. I didn't realize just how long that we have you known. You had to say old. I know. I shouldn't have... You had to say old. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, it's not that you are old. I'm saying we're old, old friends because we met back at the Eugene O'Neill Theater Center, as you reminded me when we were both critic fellows back in the early 90s. I was, I was a kid in my late 20s when I met Leslie Hoban Blake, a writer, a director. She is also on TV with our great friend Charles Gross. They co-host Two on the Isle on Manhattan Neighborhood Network on alternate Thursdays. She's also vice president of the Drama Desk, and she is an expert in directing, as I mentioned, because she's on the Joe A. Calloway Awards Committee. And this is... I. I I didn't even really know about them, but every year they give out awards to a director and or a choreographer off-Broadway. Tell us a little bit more about the Callaways, Leslie Hoban Blake. Hi there. Well, the Callaway Awards were set up by Joe A. Calloway. He was a wonderful man who was a director, an actor, and also a teacher, a professor of, of theater and direction. And he didn't have any heirs, and so he left all his money to be divided every year, you know, to be awarded every year to a director and a choreographer. It was used to be on or off-Broadway, and then it became off-Broadway. And uh, it, we're trying to follow the letter. There's, there's also a, uh, an award for acting and an award for teaching every year. And it's a monetary award. Uh, I will not say the amount, but it's significant enough to make the difference in somebody's life, I think, especially an early director, and very often an early director wins. I must say that last year, John Randall was hardly an early <laughs> director won, and this year he's nominated for On the Town. So, you know... He won for Air Apparent off Broadway down at uh, the Classic Stage Company. Right, so he won't be uh, eligible for uh, for On the Town for the Callaways this year because that's just no, off exactly. Broadway. And you said Martha Clark won for choreography last year. Martha although... Clark won for choreography in a show called Sherry, and her choreography was fine, but the show itself failed to be her. Some of her shows, the uh, show based on Hieronymus Bosch painting. Oh, that bored the hell out of me. Based on. Oh, I loved it, you see. There we go. I, 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 I can't come up with a title, so you'll have to help me there. And then the other one that I loved was her Gilded Age, the one that she did about Jerusalem Elizabeth Track at Lincoln Center. Some of those have been fascinating to me. Oh. She also did a play about Freud. Um, so those are, those I really liked. And then here comes this one by Colette, um, and it was so boring to me. Amy Irving sat on one side and read text, and then two ballet dancers came out and acted out the text. And the, the ballet dancers were fine, but it was a play, ostensibly. Ostensibly, did we yeah. for choreography. She was fair to give it to her for choreography, but I didn't care for the piece. Anyway, we should get on to Yeah, the- we need to get on to Broadway. We need to get to the Tony Award nominations, because as a directorial expert, Leslie Hoban Blake, we want to talk about the nominations for director of a musical, and those include Sam Gold for Fun Home, Casey Nicola for Something Rotten, John Rando, the aforementioned John Rando for On the Town, Bartlett Cher for The King and I, and Christopher Wheel for an American in Paris. Christopher Wielden is my hands down winner for direction. For direction? Of, of, a play that has been, well, of American in Paris, which to me is a show that is uh, being oh, wildly overlooked for things like the book. I think that Craig Lucas took a wonderful movie musical that was simply a way of getting from one Gershwin number to another in the most lavish visuals possible and minimal storyline. Boy Meets Girl, or, or Older Man Meets, meets Girl, really, because Gene Kelly was not looking that young in that film. Hmm. And it's one of my favorite all-time films, how could it not be? It's just an amazing film. Craig Lucas gave it a, a heart and a spine and a soul, I think, by bringing in the whole post-war background and bringing darker colors to it. And so I, I just think that Craig Lucas and Christopher Wilder deserve props of all kinds for this. I also think that the show that is most egregiously overlooked in the sense of getting no votes from all these other people is On the Town, because I think it came in too early. When I saw mm. On the Town, I walked out of the theater a, a foot off the floor because it's like, this is what musicals used to be like. And boy, I wish we could do this again, you know, because it was a really old-fashioned musical, but of the best kind, when you say old-fashioned, not, you know, very and bloody. So anyway, um, now we come to Sam Gold, who's the odds-on favorite. And Sam Gold is a wonder, wonder kid, or wonder kid, however you pronounce that. He's still young. I was working with him now at the public theater. That sounds much more important than it was 
But we were all working on Suzanne Laurie Park's 365 plays, 365 oh, yeah. days. So everybody got to do something. You know, just about everybody in New York had something that they could do with that. And it was wonderful and very exciting. And he was he's a very exciting young director. That said, I never found Fun Home to be a particularly interesting musical. I'm in a, obviously a vocal minority here. There's nobody else saying this. But to me, I remember the graphic novel. I liked the graphic novel. I'm a graphic novel person. I read them, I read them religiously. Mm. But, you know, it, to make that into a musical, and it's a dark musical, and it's set in a funeral home. I'm not giving anything away by saying that. And I can't imagine how the Tony producers who want to take a show on the road are going to choose a show set in a funeral home about a lesbian coming of age on the road when they could take on the town or they could take something rotten, for example, or yeah. certainly an American in Paris if they could find a, a ballet dancer who could sing the same as two young stars of... of American in Paris, yeah. Paris. I mean, if, that had, if they had only waited two years for this wonderful Leanne... What is her last name? Leanne... Cope. From Cope, thank you. Leanne Cope. They'd only waited two more years to do Gigi. She could have done both because she is so Leslie Garron, she broke my heart. Mm. She's just wonderful. Anyway, I don't know if I've said my piece here or not because I thought Bartlett Show did a wonderful job of recreating a musical I'm very close to. I directed it not well, I'm afraid. I had a week to do it in summer right. stock and I found out you can't do it in a week. <laughs> it, was, it was a sad disappointment of my life. It's when I joined SDC and said I'll never do that kind of work again. You know, the meeting on the road with mm. some help. But it, it's a, a magnificent recreation of a play that is now kind of pickled in aspic, if that's a phrase, I'm, not, I'm maybe mixing metaphors there. It's kind of like it's stodgy. I think Kelly O'Hara was born to play the role. I think that, the, that Ken Watanabe should get fiction lessons. Huh. Um, I mean, he's brilliant to look at, but I couldn't understand every other word out of his mouth, and I'm sorry to say that the rest of the production was just beautiful, but you know, it plotted on, and it plotted on, and I was waiting for him to die at the end. It was really... Really? And then he kind of just... And then he kind of just went to sleep, and so people, the little girl next to us, didn't didn't quite know what was happening, which is probably better for her than if he was dead, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? And I love Bartlett Sher with all my heart. What he did to South Pacific, you know, it, it just revitalized that show for me forever. So it, he did not revitalize so much as simply think the picture yeah. of the King and I. It was just not there for me. Do you think it's going to be Fun Home as the winner? But you would, uh, you've obviously said you'll go with Christopher Wilden if you would. Oh, uh, I vote, do. But... I, w I would love it to be Christopher Wilden. I think he'll win for choreography. And right. that's terrific because there's no, I, there's nobody out there doing what he's doing right this minute, both choreographing and directing on that level. There are a lot of people who do it, you know, do both. But he's, uh, well, Casey Nicola, of course, is, I shouldn't say that. Uh, uh, Casey Nicola is the other one. And Casey Nicola is getting robbed because something rot is one of the best shows I can remember seeing. And I had to get a script because that's my era. I'm a Renaissance scholar. Wow. And the words went by so fast. And I thought, I know those names. He's right about that shirt. That's really so and so. Fletcher and Marlowe and, and Beaumont. And so I, I got the script in every one of their references. I mean, it's kind of like a college kid stunt if you think about it. But every one of their references is right. And it doesn't matter. It's funny, funny, funny. And it's, of course, it's about the birth of, of the musical uh, back in the day of Shakespeare. I just thought it was just a hoot and a half. I think they're kind of losing out on... on oh, I mean, it got nominations, but it's not going to get many uh, many awards, I think. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's the problem. And I think it's a show... And again, I think it could travel. I don't think you need to know much. I think people who don't really know anything about the period would care less because they get the gist of the joke, you know. Um, I just thought it was, it was wonderful fun. Well, it has been wonderful fun chatting with Leslie Hovan Blake, our old friend of the neighborhood. Well, where are you going to be on Sunday? Old again with the old. Thank you, Dave. Uh, our, <laughs> our treasured friend. You, you are not so many adjectives. <laughs> Beautiful, you know, but uh, it comes out old. Thank you, thank you, Dave. It's well, lovely chatting with you as always. I look forward to watching these with you. I'm having a party in New York, and I wish that I wish you could have been with us. But I sure wish to, and I wish you good health and to talk to you once again next year on the Tony Show. I Absolutely. I'll be in my new apartment then. I'm looking forward to it. You take care, sweetie. You too, Leslie. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.